We refrain from chatting to allow people to prepare silently for Mass. Thank you.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, in the letter to the Ephesians, Paul says that we are all God's work of art. We are all God's work of art. But even old masters need cleaning. Even great works of art need to look after or to be looked after. And so we acknowledge our need to be clean, to be cleansed of our sins and ask for God's healing and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Can we have the children out, please, for the children's liturgy? Boys and girls, you know I'm going to ask you who's willing to carry the cross. It's not easy to carry the cross, even as a young person. It means you have to be kind and charitable and be like Jesus. Who's willing to carry that cross? Right, okay, why not? Don't let me turn the floor. Now, the word of God 
You've got to listen very carefully to the word of God. It's not easy to take in who's able to do that. We've got two brothers here, I think we'll go for the smallest one. Okay, so line up, you go first, hold the cross up. No fighting over the cross, boys. Only one, that's it, right, line up. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. All the heads of the priesthood and the people too added infidelity to infidelity, copying all the shameful practices of the nations and defiling the temple that the Lord had consecrated for himself in Jerusalem. The Lord, the God of their ancestors, tirelessly sent them messenger after messenger since he wished to spare his people and his house. But they ridiculed the messengers of God. They despised his words. They laughed at his prophets until at last the wrath of the Lord <coughs> rose so high against his people that there was no further remedy. Their enemies burned down the temple of God, demolished the walls of Jerusalem, set fire to all its palaces, and destroyed everything of value in it. The survivors were deported by Nebuchadnezzar to Babylon. They were to serve him and his sons until the kingdom of Persia came to power. This is how the word of the Lord was fulfilled that he spoke through Jerusalem, sorry, Jeremiah, until his land has enjoyed its Sabbath rest. Until 70 years have gone by, it will keep Sabbath throughout the day of its desolation. And in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, to fulfill the word of the Lord, that was spoken to Jeremiah, the Lord rose the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, to issue a proclamation and to have it publicly displayed throughout his kingdom. Thus speaks Cyrus, king of Persia. The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth. He has ordered me to build him a temple in Jerusalem, in Judah. Whoever there is among you of all his people, may his God be with him. Let him go up. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. God loved us with so much love that he was generous with his mercy. When we were dead through our sins, he brought us to life with Christ. It is through grace that you have been saved and raised up with him and gave us a place with him in heaven, in Christ Jesus. This was to show for all ages to come through his goodness towards us in Christ Jesus, how infinitely rich he is in grace, because it is by grace that you have been saved, through faith, not by anything of your own, but by a gift from God, not by anything you have done, so that nobody can claim the credit. We are God's work of art, created in Christ Jesus to live the good life, as from the beginning he had meant us to live it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, The Son of Man must be lifted up, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. Yes, God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost, but may have eternal life. For God sent his Son into the world not to condemn the world, but so that through him the world might be saved. No one who believes in him will be condemned, but whoever refuses to believe is condemned already, because he has refused to believe in the name of God's only Son. 
on these grounds is sentence pronounced, that though the light has come into the world, men have shown they prefer darkness to the light, because their deeds were evil. And indeed, everyone who does wrong hates the light and avoids it, for fear his actions should be exposed. But the man who lives by the truth comes out into the light, so that it may be plainly seen that what he does is done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Nicodemus is at the centre of today's Gospel. Even though he appears only three times in the Gospel story, he is a very interesting character. He was a Pharisee and a member of the Sanhedrin, the Supreme Court of the Jews. The first time Nicodemus appears is in the gospel passage we've just heard. We are told that he was impressed by the teaching and deeds of Jesus. It was clear to him that God's hand was at work through Jesus. So he came to Jesus in the dark of night, which suggests that he didn't want to be seen. But we shouldn't be too hard on him in this account. Given the fact that he was a Pharisee, it was a wonder that he came to Jesus at all. Jesus honoured him with a long interview. If you've seen The Chosen, that scene's portrayed beautifully on the top of a roof. They talk long into the night. By the time Nicodemus puts in a second appearance, opposition to Jesus has hardened. By now the Pharisees have made up their minds to kill him and were ready to do so without giving him a trial. But Nicodemus intervenes, declaring that Jesus should be at least giving, given a fair hearing according to their own law. This was a more public involvement with Jesus. And the third and last time Nicodemus appears in scripture is at the burial of Jesus. He's the man who provides a huge quantity of spices. What can we deduce about Nicodemus from these three brief appearances? The first appearance shows that he was an open-minded man and a genuine seeker after truth. The second appearance shows that he was a fair-minded man when he insisted that Jesus should not be condemned without a fair trial. And the third appearance shows that he was a wealthy man, albeit a generous and compassionate one. All of these qualities we can admire, copy, and benefit from. But what Nicodemus seems unable to do was to come out into the light to make a public declaration of faith in Jesus. He doesn't seem to have the courage to completely leave the darkness and choose deliberately the light once and for all. We are left with the picture of a decent man who could have been a great man. A mediocre person, neither a great saint nor a great sinner. Reflecting on Nicodemus should challenge us to come out from the shadows and not to be afraid or ashamed to profess our faith openly in Jesus. The divine renovation program that we have embarked upon as a parish and as individuals is to help us to do that, to be effective, courageous witnesses to the light. 
This coming week, I've been invited to go to a castle up north, Kilcoy Castle, and it's a retreat, a conference funded by Divine Renovation, and there'll be priests from all over the country attending this. And it's to help us to become reskilled in evangelizing. We've spoke about this before. Our great Catholic faith flourished up until the 50s. Why? Because we were a bit of a bubble. I remember in Whitfield an old woman saying to me when I was a teenager, Jim, I brought back a Protestant boyfriend and my dad chucked him out the house. (laughs) That's true. I'm sure some of you, that probably happened to you as well. And that's the reason that the faith was able to be passed on in those days. We were pretty insular. We were almost ghettoized. We can't, and that doesn't work nowadays. Because the influence of TV and social media, our young people are exposed to different opinions. And they drifted from the faith. What's the one thing that's going to bring them back? If we ourselves have that experience of Jesus, that means that we've got to step out into the light. We can't keep in the shadows anymore. We can't just come to Mass, tick the box and go away. We want to get involved in the parish. We want to get involved in evangelization because that's the meaning of the church. That's the purpose of the church. To spread the good news. To allow others to come and experience the healing, the mercy and forgiveness of Christ. Our people, our world needs that. Is crying out for that. And we have the sacraments in order to allow God's presence to be felt in the depth of their being. So please, when it comes to Alpha next year, you sign up. Every one of you. Because we all need that experience. We all need to be re-skilled in passing on the good news. Not just me, but also me. Let us stand and profess together our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now we pray for the church, the world, and those in need. For the church, We pray that the Holy Spirit may lead all of us in the church to a deeper conversion so we can clearly hear the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. 
for world leaders. We pray for world leaders that they may make wise decisions for the good of all the members of our global family. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our global family, we pray for the poorest communities in our global family, especially those in Rwanda, who are in need. May our actions this Lent be signs of hope for all. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For Catholic education, we ask that you bless the educational endeavors of our young people here in Scotland and the young people in Rwanda. May they both have access to quality education that equips them for a life filled with promise and purpose. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For women and girls, loving God, we pray for the safety and protection of women and girls in Rwanda. Shield them from harm, violence, and exploitation, and grant them a peaceful and secure future. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For global justice and peace. We pray that the spirit of peace will give us the strength to build a just world together, inspire leaders and decision makers to advocate for a society where everyone is treated with dignity and respect. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For hope and faith, heavenly guide, Grant women and girls of Rwanda the gift of hope and faith. May they find solace and strength in their relationship with you, knowing that you are always with them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We remember in our prayers those who have died recently. Alan Gurley, Arthur Harvey, Zena Foster, Doris Easton, and those whose anniversaries occur at this time. Scott Brady, James Timmons, Alan Timmons Jr., Veronica Jackson, William Bird, Richard Halliday, Irene Brannan, Mary Maccabi, Eddie Follan, Margaret Peggy Young, and Peggy McIntyre. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pause for a moment now, and we offer those prayers in the depth of our own hearts. <coughs> And we offer them with Mary, our mother, as we pray. Hail Mary, Mary full, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, women and, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners us now and at the hour of our day. Amen. Amen. And we make these prayers through Christ our Lord.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and your may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. God accepts sacrifice. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your heart. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. His right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you. In your kindness, and so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. (laughs) 
we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring heart to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Martin our Bishop-elect, the clergy, and all the faithful. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome then into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we have the confidence to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us the Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy of his
Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendour of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, 
and love you in all sincerity through Christ our Lord. Amen. As you'll know, the fourth Sunday of Lent is always Ea Sunday and other Episcopal charities. So there'll be a second collection taken today for that. Also, there'll be a cake and candy in the hall afterwards, and any funds raised will also go to Skia. As you'll be aware, the fourth Sunday of Lent is always Mothering Sunday as well, and we give thanks to all the mothers. So there'll be a rose for each mother as you go out of the church, because we know that you've tried your best to nurture the faith in your children, and that it's not been easy in this generation. So just on behalf of the church, I thank you for all that you do to encourage the faith and proclaim the faith. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thank <laughs> you.